<laughs> I'm digging this thing. Hold on. All right. Well, <laughs> that's it. All right, guys. This is the uh, Timber Creek build. We're out here doing the testing on this guy. And I will tell you a couple of things that I really like about this configuration. But also, I'm going to tell you about a couple of things that I don't like. That muzzle brake right here, the heartbreaker, that's actually a really nice muzzle brake. It does a great job at mitigating muzzle rise and recoil. Uh, moving back, the War Sport barrel. I'm going to go and buy the last remaining ones of these things. With the uh, uh, 55 grain at 100 yards, we're about an inch, uh, inch and a half, which is okay with me for a 49 inch, uh, $49 barrel. The uh, 77 grain, literally at 50 yards, is about three quarters of an inch, which is really good. And it's nice to know that this guy will do what it needs to be doing. Uh, on top, now we'll be doing a full-blown review on this guy. This is the Sig Sauer Bravo 5. This is a 5x32. Cool deal. It does have a BDC. And with the 55 grain, we were touching the 12x12 uh, 12 12 inch targets out at 500 yards. Uh, I will tell you this, with any BDC, you do have to true it out to make sure. So one of the things I did, I, I pulled this thing, zeroed it, made sure that it was hitting at 400, and out to 500, 600, and into 200, it was right on the money. Uh, a couple different things. Uh, if you may have noticed during that shooting sequence, uh, this guy right here was going back and forth. It was going, uh, kind of freaking me out a little bit. So... Um, it does have some movement, but I tell you, hold on, bring that bolt up. It still does have some movement back and forth. The uh, Airborne Arms trigger, as always, performs smooth as silk, and the uh, PSA upper and lower uh, billet receiver did a great job. Now, uh, I am a big guy, and as much as I like the looks of this thing, it doesn't suit me just because... I'm having to really get up in there, and I don't like being my nose right on that charging handle. And maybe that's one of the reasons why, when it was going back and forward, I was like, what in the wild, wild world of sports is going on there? So, ergonomics of the rail, the rifle as a whole performed flawlessly. Uh, I've probably, right now, I have about 150, 200 rounds through it. The DS Arms. Aluminum bolt carrier group is doing a great job. Only time will tell uh, when we get a lot more through this thing uh, and see what kind of wear we're getting on the BCG or uh, the carrier. That's what we're going to be looking at. We've got some gumming up right now, and uh, I, I'm running it as dry as I can because seriously, I'd like to see how well it goes, but we'll see. So let's do this. Uh, Let's take it over on the other side so you can see. Oh, one of the things that I'm really upset is today I actually bought uh, standard H1, H2, H3 buffers so that I could tune the bolt carrier group. Right now we're getting a little bit out to about the two and a half position. Uh, not that that's a bad thing, but I want it operating the way it should be. So uh, one of the things we're going to do is come back out. We're going to put the correct... Uh, buffer in here, but I want to show you guys the result of putting the correct buffers in on this thing. And what does that mean? So we'll be looking at the buffers, bringing those out, showing you what the difference is in the direction of those spent cases. If they go out here, here, or here in the proper operation. The Airborne Arms uh, gas block, that really cool looking gas block, I am not seeing any uh, dispersion of gas out of underneath it maybe a little bit right there but not much I'll give you a shot of that real quickly and you can see it what I want to do is let's go ahead and uh, run a 30 round mag through this thing and uh, have some fun stand by all right guys so here we are man I've got a cameras up there at 200 uh, <laughs> the uh, 300 and we got some 400 stuff up there uh, we are defending the home front. We're running this uh, five times prism scope. I've got it zeroed, I think, pretty closely. Hope the uh, 200 yard doesn't die on us. So let's do this. 55 grain.
Woo! I need to get steady. Whew. Might do it like this. <laughs> Gotta get on down. Get on down. I think I'm hitting that stuff. 300. Four hundred. Choke up on this thing. Three. And we're out. All right, so that's it, man. This is the uh, Timber Creek. Now we got a couple things, get some bear stops on here that we're gonna install later on. Uh, I'm gonna do more reviews of this guy right here, the Bravo uh, 5, 5 to 32. The claim to fame for this thing is you get a wider field of view. Uh, I'm gonna put a regular stock on here. We'll play with this on a different rifle. But uh, I tell you what, man, not bad. I can't wait to watch the video on this thing. See how it did? I don't know how we did down there. I was just having fun shooting. Anyway, that's it. Let's go to Boy 32. If you like the video, Timber Creek. You guys put together a pretty good product. DS Arms, I'm really impressed. And uh, Ryan, over there <laughs> at uh, Airborne Arms. That is one bad mamma jamma of a gas block. Let's go to Boy 32. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. Support the red, white, and blue. God bless America. God bless his men, women in uniform who support our Constitution. And I really don't think the Capitol Police said that they didn't want firearms out there. I'm out of here. Y'all be good.